to Ask Lewis with Serafina. I've got a couple of questions here that we're going to run through with the Ask Lewis segment. We've had quite a few questions come through, mostly on YouTube, but quite a few as Facebook comments as well. So let's dive straight into it. The first question that I've got, I'm just going to read it out, so bear with me. The first question is, what is the cost to upgrade cable disc brakes to hydraulic disc brakes in Australia in November 2023? Why do hydraulic disc brakes work better and last longer without needing adjustment? Very good question, Aussie Redneck Singer from YouTube. Um, upgrading from cable disc brakes up to hydraulic disc brakes is not a huge job, as a lot of people might think. When we're talking about hydraulic versus cable, just to give a very quick summary as to what that is, the hydraulic brake, you're, you're pushing on a fluid as you pull the brake lever, and then with the cable operator brakes, you're actually pulling on a cable, which is stretching the lever. Um, we'll come back in just a minute, because someone walk in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Jumping back to it, we were talking about hydraulic versus cable disc brakes. What I was quickly describing is when you pull the brake lever on a hydraulic brake, it's actually pushing a piston inside the lever that will then push the hydraulic fluid through. Whereas when you're using a cable, you're pulling on a cable. So it's a little bit sort of stretchier, I suppose, when we're talking about cable brakes. So hydraulic is more powerful. The, original, the initial question that we have is how much does it cost to upgrade to it? There's sort of a few different aspects involved in that, we have to upgrade the lever, the line and the caliper. The caliper will also include the pads in that as well, but lever, line and caliper. So replacing all of those parts, honestly it's one of those piece of string sort of questions as to whether you go for this level or whether you go the top level carbon fibre stuff. I'd say you'd need to spend at least $50 per break minimum, but I'd probably be betting on closer to about $100 per, per break to get something that's noticeably upgradable. Next question is from Chris C on YouTube, and he has asked, how often should the goop get removed and replaced slash topped up when running tubeless? Sorry, second question. When running tubeless, should you carry spare tubes or some other repair kit to get you out of trouble, worst case scenario? Great question. Most manufacturers of the tubeless sealant or goop will say that you should top it up every three to six months. The range of three to six months, I would argue, is quite long. And I suppose the variables in that are if you're riding every single day and you know to and from work and, and just spending a lot of time on the bike, then the goop is, is washing around in there quite a lot. You might need to do it every three months. Whereas if you're only really riding on a Saturday or a Sunday, you might only need to do it every sort of six months or so. Um, another part of that question was replaced or topped up. I never replace, I don't, I don't take out what's already been in there, I, I leave all the old stuff in there and just top it up with new stuff. My reason for doing that is slowly with time it'll start to, um, I'm going to say bind together and turn a little bit more yogurty rather than milky and then sometimes, hopefully, if you were to get a big enough hole in the tyre, hopefully that big piece of yogurty material can seal up a nice big thick hole that the milky material couldn't. So. I never replace, I just simply add to it. And the second part of that question was, um, when running tubeless, should you still carry spare tubes or some other type of repair kit to get you out of trouble, worst case scenarios? Absolutely yes. I say yes because if you are on the side of the road and you've got a massive stick or a big nail or something that's too big for the ceiling to fix up, you can still put a tube in there. Yes, it's gonna be messy, you'll have some goop all on your arms and it's, it's, it's ugly, but it'll get you home. So definitely carry a spare tube and replace, or you can put a tube in there just as you would for any other normal tube replacement. So absolutely yes is my answer to that question, Chris. Um, third question is, is there any, or are there any good gravel groups in Adelaide or resources in Adelaide for beginners? Great question. I would say Ride Contour in on Hutt Street in the city, just in the CBD, the sort of the eastern side of the CBD. Ride Contour would be your best place to go to talk to about that. They organise group rides, I'm going to say at least once a week for gravel, if not possibly more, I could be wrong. But they do a nice lap of the city through the parklands. I'm going to say it's about 30 kilometres thereabouts, first thing in the morning, and you get to finish with a coffee at the end. So you get to ride around with a large group of like-minded people that are also interested in gravel riding. So. They're, the, they're one of the best places to go and have a look at when it comes to a community of gravel riders. So thank you Stash Australia on YouTube for that question. 
Uh, we've got one from Skipper Dutchy again on YouTube, and he's asked, for a heavy cyclist who breaks spokes, cracks rims, or breaks frames, what do you recommend? Good question. Um, it's a difficult one to answer. Um, a lot of bikes tend to, average rule of thumb, tend to have a weight bearing limit of about 130 kilos. As we're getting closer up to that number, the only, really, the only real way that I can recommend to get around that and have stronger bikes is to get a wheel that has more spokes. When you've got more spokes, it can spread the load around across the more spokes and then obviously take some of the strain off of some of the other spokes. So stronger wheels would probably be one of the best things. He spoke about cracking rims, um, having a steel rim as opposed to an aluminium or a carbon fiber rim, steel is stronger. The unfortunate trade-off for that though is that it is heavier, but stronger, which is really your question. Um, and braking frames, again, steel is stronger than aluminium or carbon fiber. So I'd strongly recommend looking down that path, Skipper Dutchy. We've also got JP who sent in a Facebook comment and he asked, how much does your gear cost? I'm assuming he's talking about the apparel that I have here. Um, I did see this question coming up before, so I got my jerseys out. I've got jerseys for 125, made by an Adelaide company called Black Chrome, which are just down on Grange Road. So yeah, $125 for my jerseys. I think I do these long sleeve shirts for $45 or $50, and t-shirts for about $35 or $40 as well. So if for whatever reason you did want to grab some other pants, um, sorry, some other clothes, I'm happy to help out. We've also got some pants as well for $150 the full bib short that goes all the way up over your shoulders so that they don't slip out of place, which is absolutely what I recommend. Any, talk, any type of bib short that comes up over your shoulders and they don't tend to move around, unfortunate trade-off is when you need to go to the toilet, it does take a minute longer, but at least the pants didn't slip around while you were riding along. So, oh yes, um, some of you will probably notice that I'm wearing a cap. One of my friends behind the camera just pointed at the cap and reminded me that I am wearing one. Today is my one year anniversary here at my beautiful bike shop, Recycle Bicycle Sales. So I'm, I'm very excited. I've got some balloons scattered around the shop as well. All of this fun little stuff. So um, I'm in a celebratory mood today because it has been 12 months in my building here. So um, thank you everybody for watching along. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot quicker than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> a happy one year anniversary to Lewis Woo! and Recycle Bicycle Sale. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> Do you want a drink? That was so cool. Do I just drink this? That didn't go the way we thought. That was perfect. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. <laughs> See you next time guys. Bye. Bye.